Ever since the revolution, when muskets were the steady companions of Continental Army riflemen, efforts have been made by the United States government to continuously improve the performance of military firearms. In 1777, the first official muskets were built in Springfield, Massachusetts. Only accurate to about 50 yards, their limited range challenged weapon makers to develop a firearm that could be more accurate at much greater ranges. In 1841, a rifled musket, popularly known as the Mississippi Rifle, became the first percussion design firearm. That breakthrough led 10 years later to a weapon that could hit a target out to 300 yards, the mini ball rifle, which was made famous during the Civil War. The breech-loading metallic cartridge rifle that became known as the 4570 was adopted in 1873 and became the official issue of American soldiers during the Indian Wars. Adopted just in time for the Spanish-American War of 1898, was a bolt-action, magazine-fed weapon made by Craig Jorgensen. Unfortunately, soldiers armed with the new Crags found that they were being outranged and outshot by the German-developed Mauser. In 1904, a modified German Mauser, chambered with a new 30 caliber rimless cartridge, was issued, but proved little better than the Krag. It wasn't until 1906 when a new bullet, based on the pointed Spitzer, was developed resulting in the World War I Springfield rifle. The M1 Garand rifle, first introduced in 1936, replaced the Springfield. Featuring a gas-operated rotating bolt, the 30 caliber firearm was a steady performer during both World War II and Korea. Replacing the M1 in 1957 was the lighter M14, a 7.62 millimeter rifle with a detachable 20-round magazine which could fire both single shots and automatically. 20 years later, a 5.56 millimeter rifle, the M16, with an effective range of 460 meters, replaced the M14 and became the soldier's best friend in Vietnam. It fired the lighter ammunition much faster. In its second improvement, the M16A2 now has an effective range of 550 meters, making it one of the world's most effective combat rifles. Why then does the military need a new rifle if the M16 meets its toughest combat standards? Because riflemen will need a weapon with significantly higher hit probability on the projected highly lethal battlefield of the 21st century. Rifle effectiveness in combat is poor because targets are hard to find, aim at, and hit, especially when the shooter is exposed to life-threatening conditions. Thus, one way to significantly improve marksmanship is to improve the rifle. So, new evolutionary technologies must be examined today to meet tomorrow's needs. Under static test conditions, the M16 can hit a target the size of a kneeling man 100% of the time to ranges beyond 300 meters. Even at 700 meters, the probability of hit per trigger pull is greater than 60%. Even in an unstressed environment, when the M16 is placed in the hands of a shooter, its performance drops considerably beyond 100 meters. In the Army's standard record fire course, the probability of hitting targets at 300 meters is less than 70%. Under the added stress of combat, the military projects a much more significant drop-off in effectiveness, with only a 10% chance of hitting a 300 meter target. To meet this challenge, the Defense Department has begun an intensive search for a weapon technology that will at least double the effectiveness of the riflemen in combat. The Army, acting as the lead agency in the Defense Department's Joint Service Small Arms Program, has contracted with four of the world's leading weapon designers to explore new technologies. One way to increase hit probability is to fire more than one projectile per trigger pull. 
If the dispersion of these projectiles can be controlled to compensate for aiming error, the probability of at least one hit will be significantly increased. All four advanced combat rifle concepts incorporate multiple launch systems. The prototypes were developed by AAI Corporation of Hunt Valley, Maryland, Colt Industries of Hartford, Connecticut, Heckler and Koch of West Germany, and Steyr Mannlicher of Austria. AAI's prototype fires three distinct rounds in a high-rate salvo burst. The three rounds, fired at a rate of 1,800 rounds per minute, are perceived by the shooter as one round. The weapon will also fire one round per trigger pull in a semi-automatic mode. The magazine holds 30 rounds. The long profile of the weapon aids the shooter in the quick or point fire situation. The iron sights can be replaced with an optic sight for longer range engagements. The AAI weapon fires a 10.2 grain steel dart called a flechette. These fin stabilized projectiles are fired at a muzzle velocity of 4600 feet per second. The projectiles low drag and high velocity produce an extremely flat trajectory. The flechette's low muzzle impulse permits greater control of the salvo burst. Flechettes have proven to be effective against hard targets and body armor and have shown to deform and bend in soft targets, making them as lethal as bullets. The Colt weapon has evolved from the M16A2 design. It incorporates a muzzle brake compensator to reduce and control muzzle climb and an oil spring buffer to reduce perceived recoil from moving parts. Human engineering designs have resulted in a weapon with a sight rib for point fire and an adjustable buttstock to better fit the shooter. Like the M16, the magazine capacity is 30 rounds. This weapon can also be fitted with either iron or optic sights. The 5.56 millimeter duplex ammunition contains two bullets in the same cartridge case. For each round fired, two bullets travel to the target. The first bullet travels to the aim point, while the second is offset in a controlled pattern. In addition to the duplex ammunition, the Colt weapon can also fire the current M16 NATO standard round. The round would be used primarily for long-range engagements. The Heckler and Koch prototype, like the AAI, fires a three-round salvo burst. From there, the similarities end. H&K's bullpup design, so described because its working mechanism is housed in the stock, fires caseless ammunition. By eliminating the extraction cycle, it can fire a salvo burst at a rate of 2100 rounds per minute. The weapon also fires single shot or fully automatic at 400 rounds per minute. The mechanism consists of a rotating chamber and a recoiling system that delays the recoil until after the third bullet has left the muzzle. The single row magazine located on top of the weapon holds 45 rounds. The sighting system consists of a dual power integral optic sight. Its caseless ammunition weighs half as much as the M16's and is 40% smaller, a significant benefit to the rifleman. The round consists of one solid block of high ignition temperature propellant with a bullet inside. H&K's weapon and ammunition, with the exception of the optic sight, is identical to the G11 rifle being tested by the German government. The Steyr weapon, also a bullpup configuration, is the simplest design of all the prototypes. Its cylindrical plastic cased flechette ammunition is fed in a straight line from the magazine into the chamber which rises to the firing position. The weapon fires single shot or a three round burst at a rate of 1200 rounds per minute. The current magazine capacity of the weapon is 24 rounds. The Steyr weapon can be configured with iron 
or dual power optic sights. Its plastic telescope cartridge weighs half as much as the M16 round and is ejected from the bottom, eliminating ejection problems with left or right-handed shooters. The round features a side initiating primer and fires a flechette at 4,900 feet per second. The various technologies represented by these four concepts will be evaluated in a field experiment with Army and Air Force shooters on a specially designed range. As a control measure, the M16A2 rifle will be used alongside the new weapon prototypes. Not only are the technologies represented by the weapons new, so is the test range, which the Army has designed to measure and assess the effectiveness of the systems. Buckner Range, located at Fort Benning, Georgia, was totally redesigned and instrumented to provide more precise firing information than has ever been gathered before. Run by a specially designed computer system, its two firing lanes, which can be run independently, can present pop-up and moving targets from ranges of 25 meters to 600 meters. The location and behavior of targets have been designed to replicate the large aiming errors experienced in combat. Using curved rods that sense the shock waves created by supersonic projectiles, the system will record where each round penetrates the airspace around the targets out to 300 meters. Thus, the system will be able to measure both hits and misses, providing valuable information to the Defense Department in assessing the effectiveness of the prototypes. Exposure times for these pop-up targets will vary from as little as one and a half seconds to as long as 10 seconds at longer ranges. Moving targets are located at ranges of 75, 150, and 225 meters. Selected moving targets are also covered by a series of curved rod sensors to maintain the airspace penetration window around the entire 60-foot length of travel. Moving targets are exposed for three or five seconds. Their two operating speeds of six and 12 feet per second simulate walking and running targets. The computers will control the behavior of the targets in the test. Rapidly appearing multiple stationary and moving targets will challenge the firers. The system will track every event, when the target is raised, when the round leaves the muzzle, and the time and location of the projectile when it passes through the target area. As the shooter fires, the round penetrates the target or the airspace around it. One computer accurately records where each round goes. A second computer controls the target presentation and data collection and tracks the operational status of each target. This computer also keeps a running total of hits and misses. The operator can rerun, pause, or override target presentations if necessary. Several other features of this system include simulated return fire, which can be triggered if an exposed target is not engaged within a specified amount of time, audible hit indicators, and monitors to record the heart rate of the shooters. To further stress the shooter, the Army and Air Force participants will exercise just before firing and will have the added pressure of team competition. But the primary stress comes from the range itself. Firers won't know which targets will appear, how many will appear at one time, how long they will be exposed, or whether the target will be moving, and if so, how fast. Additional stress will be caused by the wide target area. The results of these tests, scheduled through the end of 1990, will be assessed by the Armed Services' future needs. If these technologies get the go-ahead, U.S. servicemen could have a new combat rifle in their hands by 1996.